greetings and welcome to 10 minute paintings. Now I'm quite under the weather so you're going to have to forgive my voice for this but I did want to still get a lesson out this week and that is what we are doing. So I'm beginning this painting here with a large square headed brush because it can deliver a good amount of paint quickly. And I'm starting at the bottom with a very desaturated light blue. Then using the same brush, I'm going up to the top and I'm applying a darker desaturated blue. As you can see, I'm now blending the two together and I'm being incredibly quick with my brush strokes because acrylic paints do dry quickly and I want to ensure that I get a nice soft gradient between one and the other. If you find that it's getting kind of grainy in between the two and you aren't getting that soft transition, I would implore you to simply add more of the dark color on the top and more of the light color on the bottom. Then again, proceed to blend the two together. Then very softly, I'm going over the entire areas. You don't want to press too hard with the brush or you can create a streaky aesthetic. The softer your application is with the brush, the more of a delicate blend you will be able to render. So from there, I'm taking a black, applying that to the top, and once again, moving both upwards and downwards with my brush. Now, I am going to add some additional colors to the sky, but I'm going to let that dry initially. In the meantime, using the same large square-headed brush, I'm going to take some black and begin to map in a silhouette of my mountains. Now, as you can see, my mountains are going to have a number of varying peaks. It's very important that we don't simply make each mountain an exact replicant of the one beside it, just a triangle after a triangle after a triangle. You want to combine them, create multiple interesting points on each and ensure that it has a good amount of diversity. Doing this will ensure that your painting is so much more interesting and so much more lifelike. And that's really important when we use kind of surreal colors like we will in this painting. Something that innately doesn't look natural to the eye, but can be a very real thing. So with that being said here, as you can see, I'm just continuing to block in all of this pigment. I'm applying a good amount of the brush so I get a very wide um, range of application. And now that that's there, I'm just going to let it dry for five to 10 minutes, just until it is fully finished and you don't see a glare. From there, I'm taking a very, very watered down pink and orange and using that same large square headed brush, I'm creating a wash. So because the paint has so much water in it, it's fairly transparent. I'm going over the mountains and the sky and you're not seeing a um, disruption in the mountain itself, right? So this is just a way of adding some color into the sky and making it darker without having to worry about adding all those colors when we were trying to create that smooth gradient. This is just a little step to make things easier and yet again a softer touch with the brush will ensure something much more delicate. Now this is something I'd implore you to do in stages. Start with something very see-through then I'm going back in with additional orange and working that in and just working upwards, right? You want this to feel, again, like a very soft gradient from one color to another. And all of these colors are really changing the mood of the painting. Now, it may look a little bit streaky right now, but as it dries, I promise it will look so much better. So with that being said, I'm now taking another small square-headed brush and some pink and orange. I'm mapping the outskirts of the side of my mountains that is going to be adopting light, right? Because light's going to wrap around these mountains and one side is probably going to be darker than the others. So I'm picking my brighter side and in the same slanted stroke as the mountain itself, I'm applying this pigment. 
Now generally we see mountains finished with a knife, however I wanted to show you what it would be rendered with a brush because I know everyone doesn't have a palette knife. So again, we're creating all of our strokes in that same um, angle and I'm not using much water with this. I want it to have a fairly grainy effect. That grainy effect is going to imply little, little divots in the rocks, little areas, and it's going to add a lot of additional detail. You don't want it to be this perfectly smooth, perfect gradient like the sky, right? You want it to have inconsistencies. I'm also leaving varying portions of the mountain open, as you can see, little black openings and that sort of thing. And that's really going to imply that there are paths or different ways that you can go up and climb and do all of these different things. It adds a story and a, a sense of adventure to it. So when you're painting mountains, ensure that you're leaving openings in varying areas. Then I'm taking that same brush and a lighter than the black but darker than the color we were using pigment and I'm applying it to the darker sides of my mountains. This is going to be kind of an in-between color, a middle tone, and the light's not touching these sides of the mountain, so it's going to be darker, but it might still get a little bit of reflected light, which is why we're not just leaving it all with a pure black. So now that that's applied, I'm going to take more additional pink and orange and reapply it to the edges of my mountains. This is really important because acrylic paint dries generally much more transparent and dark than we initially think. So we need to put on a litany of layers. And that's exactly what I'm doing. You're going to want the majority of the very vibrant thick paint at the top. And then as we get towards the bottom of the mountain, it is meant to dissipate, right? So as you can see, it just gets lesser and lesser, but I'm still trying to create that added detail there at the bottom as well, and just ensure that it doesn't get boring. I want to ensure that it maintains that interest and the viewer feels like they can start at the bottom and work their way up to the top of the painting. So what we're going to do now is taking our medium-sized round-headed brush, is take some black paint, some white paint, and begin to map in some clouds, predominantly on the top edges of our painting. Now, this is darker than the sky, and as you can see, because we're using a round brush, the edges are fairly feathered. And this feathered aesthetic is fantastic for the clouds because it doesn't look harsh. It looks far away, it looks kind of fluffy, and it ensures that we have a difference between the texture in the mountains and the texture in the clouds. As the clouds get farther back, I'm making them much more small and I'm applying less pressure with my brush so they're a little bit more transparent and soft. I'm also applying the clouds to both the left and right hand side corners because I want to create a vignette that draws the eye inwards to the mountain in the center of the painting. So now we're going back into the mountain yet again. I'm also taking some of those colors from the mountain and applying them to my clouds on the top. And this is just going to ensure that we have a very cohesive painting, something where all of the colors blend together naturally in the way that they should. Then taking another medium sized square headed brush with a lot of water and some pink and white. I'm creating some clouds in the foreground. I want to ensure that there are clouds both in front of and behind this mountain to ensure that it looks like a three-dimensional space, that the clouds are surrounding it on all sides, right? And when you have clouds that look kind of small in comparison to the mountain itself, it really goes to add a lot of vastness to the mountain, right? It looks a lot bigger by comparison. So once I have that all applied with the square headed brush, I'm using my finger to very lightly move on top of it and feather it out. Again, this is just to make it softer and stand out against the harsher aesthetics that our mountain creates. I'm going back and reapplying additional light to those clouds 
and just kind of working and building it up, building it up, building it up, because it does dry a little bit darker. Now I'm going behind my mountain and I'm going to apply some very light foggy effects. And so I'm just being fairly careful. I'm using the square headed brush so that I can work around the edges of my mountain very sharply and consistently. And then with my finger, I'm blending it up very softly. So here we're just continuously building that fog up and ensuring we have a nice contrast between the fog and the dark clouds. So there we have it, our 10 minute painting. I truly hope you've enjoyed. If you'd like to learn more, there's a link in the description to my book, Acrylic Paintings for Beginners. And of course, I post every Saturday. I hope to see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. And again, I apologize for my incredibly sick voice. But I again, have a wonderful week. Thank you.